plant won't sow, so if you don't sow, you won't reap. So I just let it go how it is, and if, if it rains, we'll work it out. Amen. Work it out. Well, I just realized what we're going to take care of. Amen. 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 I'm glad we got Abraham. And so let's let's get it done. And then don't forget, let's pack a few. I've been inviting people, inviting people, inviting people. Uh, I, I, I sent out some cards, but I told uh, Bonnie she can't walk, which can work day. She said, can you give me something? I said, I said, yes. So I gave her all these names, people that used to come and don't, people that do, you know. And uh, uh, people that's visiting church and business cards, and, and uh, she got some names from people that's here working. And she sent out like 75 invitations. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She can't walk, but she can work. Yeah. 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 And so, it, I hope you've been as busy as she was, and some of us have been. And whoever ranks the most visitors, we're going to give you the chore from Billy Graham. Uh, center that beautiful, which you might wait around Christmas, that beautiful carry ride, that big Christmas dinner. And there's other things to do up there too. Or uh, you can go to the Narrow Way Productions and you can pick any way, any week you want to. You don't have to wait till Christmas up there and they'll feed you and you get to see a, a play. And on both of those, it's for two, okay, because we assume it's going to be two and it's a month and you can buy somebody. So uh, I'm just excited. Uh, whoever picks, whoever gets first choice, the runner-up gets the one to wait. Okay. And, uh, so keep working. It ain't here yet. <coughs> it ain't here yet. So our goal is 100. I counted uh, yesterday. I, I thought I remembered right. With just these seeds and those seeds, there's 114. <coughs> and with those at the back, there's about 100. Three or four more. I <laughs> mean, we put back there. There's been some put in, took out, and everything. Then we can always set some chairs out back there. There's room for enough load to carry it back. I'll stand up here. Amen. <laughs> no, no, when the choir comes down, you can sit up here because some people, yeah, yeah, these true. people don't want to sit with their family, so you can come sit in their place. And I was going to ask the people to do that. We did that last time. We had 100, I think, the last time. And uh, so, so uh, if you're going down to be with your family, somebody else is single or something. So if you are used to that, just let me know. But we'll work it out. And, and, and my wife said, well, they need people that need room to move. I hope they ain't room to move. <laughs> yeah, they need it, man. I hope they ain't. I, I hope they have people standing along the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 I have put two or three in the bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just stand up. Just stand up. What's wrong with thinking like that? I'm standing up. Oh, you can sit in the bathroom. The bathroom's on. Over half of us only that thing. You can sit on that. Just don't fall off the wall. And we'll dry baptize you. Anyway, I'm excited about food. Let's eat. Eat. I want you to bring the most fattening, greasy, uh, carbs, sugar. Just bring that 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 killing stuff. So that's when people's happy when they eat that. They can get over it the week after. That's right. Eat all you want and get over it Monday and Tuesday. Monday. Fast for three or four days. Just fast for three or four days. It's too late for you. <laughs> if you're over there in the crowd by now, it's too late. <laughs> Somebody said something about me one day, said, ain't you worried about cholesterol? I said, it's too late. <laughs> if I got it, it's too late to clear it out. <laughs> and it took almost 70 years to get this way. Maybe I got another 70 before I finally get it. I ain't worried about it. I'm just going to So bring, bring, bring people and uh, just make sure that... Uh, they get something to eat, okay? Talk to me in state. All right, uh, let's see. Talk to Brother Tony Green. Uh, he's coming to preach tentatively so far. Uh, what did I say? Uh, yeah. I'll 
October 28th, 29th, and 30th. I have to give you the tracks. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. So be praying about that. And uh, I told him to just come preach against everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just preach yeah. against everybody. Get mad. Spit it. Holler. Double up down. Yes. Well, maybe not two minutes. <laughs> I'm excited about both of those things. Yes. 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 I don't think we have any more of these, and that's okay if you don't. Yes. But if you do, let's give them away. Okay? Yes. Don't, they're no good next year. That's that's right. Right. That's that's right. Right. Okay. So get rid of them. Don't throw them away. Give them away. All right. All right. Uh, I think that's all our announcements. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll sing another song. I didn't know you was coming, Tracy, so I got the, the other song later up here. He knows the song. Singing on the blood of the night. On the blood of the night. Uh -huh. Turn with me to page 30. Nothing but the blood. Dark Burgundy book. That's why I handed them out. Number 30. Really suppose you gave you one when you came in the door. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my free, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but Yeah. 
the line as he's in the line. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. That's A L A. I'm some. That's right. All. Thank God. Amen. 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 All right, tonight is the uh, other's offering. If you know anybody that needs some help, help somebody recently, but we still got a good amount in there. And uh, if you want to call it benevolence fund, whatever you want to call it. And so if you got something uh, tied to a building fund or something, please put it on the load. Okay. Or if you want credit for this, put it on the load. All right. Billy, would you pray for the offering? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for yes. having you back in your house tonight, Lord. And we love you and thank you, thank you for all you do for us. Lord. Yes, if you would pass the rod and ask you to bring your words to us, let your words sink into us, Lord. Yes. Help somebody else with that. <coughs> and we love you and thank you for all you do. And you've done so much for all of yes. us. Yes. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 You be Just tell them to. 
Who else? 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 Who else?
and your ability to prayer. Somebody else? Yeah. I just wanted to give a praise report on Lynette Cameron. We stopped in to see her today. <clears throat> and last week we had just about given her up because she was in such bad shape. And uh, today she was lucid, she was happy, she was eating. Uh, complete turnaround and thank everybody for their prayers and for <clears throat> and uh, for helping. I've asked for prayer for my, my little brother and his whole family before. And then, um, right, I think it was last Sunday, you talked about, you know, you've only got so many friends and all that. You probably make your circle through, circle back and through and everything. And probably two days before that, I had sent him a text and invited him to come stay in the anniversary service. Uh, he didn't scream at me. He didn't, you know, belligerently respond this time. So that's different from what he usually does, you know. So, if you just keep them in the prayer still, that no, if, if they can just come in, I just I feel like if they can just come in and really give the word of God a chance to hear it. I just feel like they there's a chance they hear it. They may. I got praise report. Good. My, my baby brother had lung cancer. This was I had that September, and um, he got radiation damage to his right lung. He's got like pneumonia. There with his collapsed lung. He got ready to go to the and we went and had a test scan done the other day on his chest and his head. There's no sign of cancer. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's starting to go to church now. But, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm just, I'm fat nine. Now, if y'all want somebody to put, put a speck on every week, say that 
says, Behold the Lamb of Amen. God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two sides posts and on the upper north posts of the house, wherein they shall eat. Now the whole family is sitting there together. And uh, you'll learn later, they were dirty, they were ready to leave, they were prepared to leave, they were dressed to leave, and they had this feast, and they, uh, uh, right before the feast, they, they, they took that lamb's blood, and they put some, uh, they used a hyssop, it's just for like a little blue cross thing, and uh, uh, they put some right up there on top of the door, and they put some right there, they put some right there, and you'll think about that, that may say bloody cross, don't you? And that's what Jesus died on. A bloody cross. It was a prophetic thing, too. And uh, he says this they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Now, that night, you got to eat. Can't wait. They got to do it exactly when he said it. And it's going to be roasted with fire. Can't be. Boiled or broiled or whatever, or baked, it had to be roasted with fire, which represents the judgment of God, yeah. and it had to be eaten with unleavened bread, which unleavened means the impurities were taken out, so it was pure bread, no additives or pollution, you know, and with bitter herbs shall eat, they shall eat it. The bitter herbs represent the suffering of the children of Israel in Egypt and also the suffering of Jesus Christ. Eat none of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, that's the judgment, pure judgment of God. His head with his legs and with the purpose thereof, the whole thing. Ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remain of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. Thus shall ye eat it. Because it would decay. It would rot. And Jesus' body didn't rot. Right? That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. It didn't rot. And uh, so, uh, let not, and you shall eat it. Look here, verse 11. You shall eat it with your loins dirty. Now, what that means is men and women wore, women wore those long gowns, you know, and men wore tunics and with a gown over them and they would take that tunic and they'd pull it up like a pair of short breeches and they'd tuck it in what they called their girdle and that sack they tuck it in so they could run they're ready to run ready to leave and uh, so uh, he, he said both mm, I'm sorry, uh, eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, be ready to go and you shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover. This is not a feast. Right. A lot of hippie churches now do what they call the Lord's Love Feast. Well, the, the communion, the Lord's Supper, is, is it representing this. It's not representing a feast. Right. He says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Amen. And the blood shall be to you for a token or sign upon your houses where you are. And when I see the blood, didn't we just say that? When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, to the judgment wasn't for the children of Israel, it's for you. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. In other words, it's a law. You got to do this. From now on, once a year, this is what you do. Seven days ye shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your house. Came out at night. For whosoever eat leaven bread from the first day to the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel, because that leaven represents sin, corruption. And the
And then the first day there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done to you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations, that means from now on, by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days there should be no leaven found in your house. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Now that doesn't mean they're going to cast him out forever later on. You'll see in Leviticus, there was a time period on that. He would be expelled for a certain amount of time because he was considered unclean because he ate the leaven during the unleavened bread time. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations, you shall eat unleavened bread. Do y'all know what unleavened bread is? Do you ever eat unleavened bread? Martin. Huh? Martin, no. It's not supposed to be up. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying bread. That's a particular kind of bread. Any bread that's flat bread has no leaven in it is unleavened bread. That's why we eat the unleavened crackers thing, you know, because they don't have any added in it. But the point is, leaven represents corruption. And if they're going to honor the Lord during the Passover feast, they need to be clean from corruption. I think we'll start getting back to that. And he said, uh, You shall eat nothing in leaven, in all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin where you killed that lamb. And strike the lintel and the two side posts, that means the blood on each side, with the blood that's in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. Have you ever noticed that? People don't think God smites wicked people anymore. You can't even say that. They'll smite you if you say that. When he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door. Will not suffer or allow the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Amen. You shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And they still do. They don't put the blood on doorposts, but they still have a Passover feast. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye then by this service? That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptian and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped, and the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. Lord, would you pray for this short message tonight? Now, with it. Lord, we thank you for, for your precious blood that was shed. Thank you. Lord, what an amazing thing to know who <clears throat> God is, Lord. Yeah. Lord, you showed us by uh, living and walking on this planet, Lord, yeah. and you come down from heaven, Lord, and, and you walked the walk we couldn't walk, yeah. Lord. But you wanted to show <laughs> us how much you loved us, Lord, and you gave your life for this also, Lord. What an amazing thing. So be with the pastor as you I want to rehearse this just a few minutes before we go. This is that final play, the death of the firstborn. First of all, 
verses 1 through 11 are the instructions on how to be passed over by the angel of death. Now, somebody said it to me, you know, the angel of death uh, uh, comes back to people. Uh, this is not the same as that. This is a plague of death. The wages of sin is still dead, but this was an actual plague on a particular group of people all at one time directly commanded by God that all these firstborn of that nation would die. This never happened again. But in, in verse 12, if you look at it, well, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, even the animal. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to prove I'm God. They're not. I am the Lord. You see that? And the blood shall be to you and, and, and for a token upon the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague will not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, they were saying each house was saved by a a lamb, a particular lamb for every household. And I, I think about it, you can't help but think about John 3 16. You think about that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He let his firstborn die so that we could live. Yeah. Yeah. And he was called the Lamb of God. Yeah. And he shed his blood. The Bible says, for the sins of the whole world. There's no sin that the blood of Jesus can destroy. Oh, Where is the lamb? Amen. Where is the lamb? Preach that right there, brother. Amen. But see, the children of Israel, you got to remember, uh, it, it's been hundreds of years since they heard from God. It's been generations since they heard from God down in Egypt. They went into Egypt. You know, living by faith and then they multiplied, multiplied, multiplied. But uh, there was no prophet there. There was no priest there. And after Joseph died, it says that the, the, the next, well, two Pharaohs later, it says he knew not Joseph. And he poured out the wrath of Egypt upon the children of Israel and treated them like slaves instead of, instead of guests. They were guests at first because of Joseph. It was just here it is, about three or four generations later, and they're slaves, and, and God's trying to set them free. But see, a whole civilization had been built up, and every that whole civilization, for their well-being and for their what they wanted, depended on those slaves. Right. You know, well, this, hey, this whole world's the same way. Come on, brother. Yeah. This whole world says is it set it is. up. And it depends on slaves of yep. sin That's right. to keep it going. Yep. There wouldn't be no liquor industry. There wouldn't be any drug industry. Oh, right. There wouldn't be any prostitution. There wouldn't right. be any child molestation. Right. Uh, there wouldn't be any, all, all these things that profit mankind. That's right, right If it right. wasn't for that sin. Yes, yeah. yes Lord. And if it wasn't for being a slave to yeah. sin. That's right, Bruce. A lot of the profit of the world would be gone. Think about it. Think about it. And it takes the blood of a lamb to set us free as slaves. I said, we're, we're slaves of Egypt. All through the Bible, Egypt, the world is likened unto Egypt. When it talks about the world, it compares it with Egypt or Babylon. And so, all through the Bible, people are enslaved in the world, which is a type of Egypt, and the only way to get out of that slavery yep. is that somebody had to die and pay the price of our sin. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus was a type of that land. You know it. John one twenty nine. John the Baptist said. Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin. Uh, 
without blemish, it says in 12, in verse 5 and 6, I was, I, I, I think chapter 12, verse 5 and 6, yeah. Your, your lamb shall be without blemish. Without, without blemish. You know what that means? You couldn't see anything wrong. Look at verse 6. And ye shall keep it up into the 14th day, same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. There's only one lamb. The lamb of God. Take place in the world. There was one lamb for every household. But there's only one lamb for the whole world yes. to be saved. Thank you, Lord. And somebody said one time, I just can't see. <clears throat> I just can't see how a loving God would kill his own son just because of somebody else's sin. I, I said, well, that's the ultimate proof of the love of God. Yes, Lord. That he gave his son so that you could be saved. So that the death angel would pass over you and not drag you off in this place. And then in chapter 12, verse 6, it says, uh, It shall kill. The congregation of Israel shall kill it. <clears throat> John MacArthur, who most people like now, I still don't care too much for the Southern Baptist preacher, but years have gone by. So therefore, he got kind of mixed up a few years back, and he preached a sermon, and, and, and you can find it online yeah. if you don't believe it. Uh, uh, he said it wasn't the blood of Jesus that saved us from our sin. It was the body of his death that saved us from our sin. Because the wages of sin is death, that he uh, that God killed him because of our sins, which is true. But Leviticus, I think 17 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Right. So they drained his blood. And all, all the prophecy. Yeah. Said that they wouldn't even break a bone on him. So it wasn't about his body. That's right. That's right. You're right. They only stabbed the sword in his yeah. side to make sure he was dead. They right. let that blood and water pour out. They put nails in his hands. But see, uh, uh, somebody's got to die. Somebody's got to be the lamb so others can lead them forever. Yes. Uh, I like this when it says, shall kill it. We just talk about one lamb. Yep. Amen. Amen. Talk about, uh, talk Amen. about that one lamb here in the evening. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one lamb. Right? Yes. There's only one lamb. Uh, there's not many saviors. There's only one savior. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Yes. And, and, and Jesus said, anybody else comes and says he is even Thief and alive. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. And there's been many of them come through. That's right. And the world's looking for another one right now. That's right. Oh, oh Egypt's <laughs> looking for somebody to say. Yeah, if we ever get that idiot out of the White House, we'll be safe. <laughs> but don't you think, don't you think they're still not going to be looking for one world government <laughs> and a one world leader? They're still looking for one. They're just disappointed the one they thought was dead they ain't him. This past week, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, by the Pope, they had this great, great gigantic meeting in Rome, of course, and they invited all, all the religious leaders of the whole world. There was hundreds of thousands. And I, I mean, every kind of religion was there. You know, those that worship monkeys and those that won't eat cow because they think it might be grandma reincarnated. Uh, uh, those that worship the sun god, those that worship the woman god, all, all religions in the world, except for Bible believing Christians, right. 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 showed up. Come on, Bruce. Amen. And he said, "We're the problem." Mm. That's what he told them. He said this: uh, 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 "This religious fanaticism is our problem." He said, "Christianity is progressive; it keeps changing." Not what my Bible says. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and I'm changing. Hey, hey. 
But see, they're getting them all together. Right. Get them all together. Well, I got news for you. There wasn't one slam, uh, slain for each house, one land slain for each house, and they had to kill it in order for those people to be saved. And there's only one lamb that was slain for us, and his name Amen. was Jesus Christ. Amen. If you don't like that one, you're going to burn, buddy. Go ahead and have all the meat you want to have. Vote. Have all the votes you want. Have all the committees you can organize. Uh, uh, do polls and studies and all that stuff and come up with any statistics you want to. But if you don't put the lamb blood over your heart's door, you're going to die in your day. Amen. That's the truth. Yes, Lord. That blood ain't applied. Right. Verse, I'm getting ahead of myself. Verse 7 said, And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door post of the house where they show you. That blood, now they, uh, they, they, they sacrificed the lamb. They got it ready to cook and to eat. They had a basin of blood that they drained. They cut its throat and they drained its blood into that basin. They got a little hiss, a little brush, a little bush, but they don't apply to that door. Come on. The first and foremost going to die. Right. You can know everything about the Bible, you know everything about Jesus, and believe it. But if you don't apply it, you're going to die. And go to because the Israelites, they knew what to do. They had it ready. But see, uh, uh, you can know every verse in the Bible. But if you don't apply the blood of Jesus Christ to your heart, you do. You do. And that's a lot of good people. People that know it, but they've never applied it. Oh, Jesus. How you apply it, preacher? John 1 12, my favorite verse, but it means it received him. Amen. Yes. To them gave he the power of God. To come to, uh, uh, gave to, to them gave he the power of God and salvation. So if, if you want to apply it, you got to receive it. Right. Yes. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the Lamb. Yes, yes, Lord Jesus. I am the Savior. Yes. yes, Lord Jesus, I do need to say. Yes, I believe you died in my place. My place. And I receive you as my Savior. Not a Savior, the Savior, but my Savior. You apply it to you, and then the blood. So if that Jew didn't put that blood on that door, this baby boy was going to die that night. The firstborn sheep is going to die. The firstborn cow is going to die. It, hey, if he didn't apply that blood to that door, his firstborn donkey's going to die if he's got one. Because, yeah. see, you didn't believe God enough to go through with it. Amen. Now, I don't think if that happened. If it did, I think God would have told us. I, yeah. I think they all applied. I think so. Amen. But if you know about the blood of Jesus Christ, and you know he's the sinless son of God and you know he lived a sinless life and died in the place he was that clean without blemish lamb and he lived that kind of life and he died in our place he shed his blood for our sin and, and you know all that and you don't do anything with it you wasted your time weren't you and we got religious people all over this town know everything we're talking about right now and they never applied. Uh -oh, <laughs> he said they applied it. Now, look at this. In verse 13, chapter 12, verse 13. I'm back through. Missy done made the devil mad already. She's back, she's back there in the devil. Huh? In verse 13 of chapter 12, he said, Well, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite. He's just going to hit them. He's going to kill them. All the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Those who have applied it have perfect protection. 
on his sickest day, he'd say, "Lot better not deserve it." But that night he said, "Not too good." He said, "Will you pray for him?" And I said, "Sure." He said, "Will you pray that God would just take him?" David, thank you for praying that prayer. I'm sorry, David. So I went over and prayed. I said, God, you've been faithful to us. And he is today. He's kept the faith. He's run his race. I said, he's served you. There's a lot of people been saved because of this man. A lot of people been saved. I said, would you just send him free from this old body? Amen. Yes. Amen. I felt the shoes. And I could imagine, really, I could imagine it right there beside the big wood. I, I just felt like I could feel his spirit this morning. And I've seen other people die. Or if you don't have the blood, the Lord bless you. No, I, hey, I've seen them wailing and crying and kicking and screaming and hollering. Let me tell you something. You better apply that blood. And then, uh, this feast, it is a time for Christ. Think about it. Unleavened bread. Jesus said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. Amen. Yes, <laughs> Amen. He said, as your fathers ate man in the wilderness, I'll give you bread to keep your life for yes, heaven. Yes, He's the bread. Hey. And he was unleavened bread, too. See, so me and you, we yeah. got contamination in yeah, us. Right. Yeah, that's right, Jesus. People try to some cook us, they might get sick. Yeah. Read, us. Yeah. That's good for Read up and sin and yeah. disease and everything else. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank God. The blood shall supply. Amen. And I've eaten the bread of life that came down from heaven, the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm gonna quit it. Next week we'll finish 14 through 28, and we'll talk about that being a memorial to Israel, and also how that uh, relates to the Lord's Supper, or some call it communion. We'll talk about that more later. Let's stand, Father. Thank you for your word. So much blessing there. We can talk all night. On this. It's been good to us. I pray for. One among us doesn't know you as their personal Savior. If they haven't applied that blood to their own door, but they do it tonight. And for those that are saved, Lord, maybe they didn't know all this stuff. And they didn't know that they're locked in by the Holy Ghost and the death angel is not going to keep them. They're in your hand and your hand is in the Father's hand. No man can pluck them out. Thank for what you've done. Thank for what you're doing. Uh, we ask it in Jesus. This man, come on, before we see that last one. Everybody gets him to the garden. Oh, the garden, the garden book. He's right for sure. Amen. I really like this song. It's going to help me. 19. Yes, page 19. There is a fountain filled with blood from cross. And sinners plunge beneath that blood, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, and sinners plunge beneath that blood. Lose all the guilty stains. The mighty rejoice to see that fountain in his face. And there may I go bow and see, wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. And there may I go by and see. Wash all my sins away. Shall never lose his power. Let me. Yeah.